You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. To awesome Sunday show, Connor here and Pat. Pat, how you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? Doing good. How was your Thanksgiving? It was good. How was yours? Uh, I worked. <laughs> yeah, I did too, but not as late as you. Nah, it's all right. I hope everybody out there had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, but for all those of you who had to uh, wait for that Toshiba 4K TV, that's probably <laughs> worse than your 1080p TV you bought <laughs> three years ago. Thank you for yeah. I hope the the twenty five day wait was worth it. Yeah, <sighs> whatever is. I guess I guess it'll be worth it when I look at that check, maybe. But anyway, uh, I hope hopefully you all had a nice Thanksgiving with your family, uh, having some good old turkey, some stuffing. Hopefully, not none of you have a celiac disease, so you can enjoy stuffing. Do you like stuffing? I do. You know what? My mom made stuffing this year. It might have been the best stuffing I ever had. Oh, you know really? She, you know what she did? No. She cut up breakfast sausage and put it in there and then mm. and then made it. That's a good idea. It was... It, I'm telling you, it was fucking really good. Like, All right. I'll yeah. have to consider that. Okay. So anyway, uh, time for our new segment, Dad Ass News. Pat, you want to start off? All right. I only have one piece of news. Um, but Doctor Strange has officially crossed $600 million worldwide, making it the MCU's biggest single character intro. So, like, their biggest origin mm-hmm. movie so far. And, you know, which is impressive coming after, you know, Iron Man and Captain America and everything. Like, that's pretty damn impressive. Yeah. For a character that was a huge risk to become their biggest, uh, you know, character intro. I respect that. No, yeah, that's uh, that's a great feat, and uh, congratulations. Yeah, and it's not it's not counting the Guardians because that's a team. That is a team. Yeah. So it's like one character. Yeah, as in one a singular superhero with an origin and a purpose yeah. and a resolution. Yeah. Six. Yeah. So it's even, you know, even more guaranteed than it already was that we're getting a Doctor Strange too, even though it's not announced yet. But it, it'll happen. Yeah. It, you don't think Kevin Feige has that in his mind? Seriously. Speaking of Kevin Feige, I have some news about Kevin Feige. He, orig- he, uh, I'm sorry, he recently did an interview with Variety magazine. Uh, Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige was once asked, I'm sorry, was asked once again about the possibility of working out a deal with Fox to allow the Fantastic Four and the X Men to join the MCU. Now this comes from the Nerdist, and quote from Kevin Feige is. As he said, it's an impossibility at this juncture. We certainly have enough film to keep us busy for a number of lifetimes. So, pretty much saying no, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. Well, it's probably possible in some alternate Earth, I'm sure. But no, it's, yeah, it's not going to happen. No. Um, Which does suck because there's some characters that I would love that Fox owns the right to, to see in the MCU. Or, you know, to see the Fantastic Four and their characters go back to Marvel so that we could actually get a decent Fantastic Four movie would yeah. be sick. But I think that if they did include the entirety of the, you know, the Fantastic Four would not be too much. But, like, if they included the whole X-Men roster and then, like, a whole slew of characters yeah. that come from that. I mean, the MCU is already big enough right now. You know, a lot of people are fearing that it's going to get too big to hold its own weight, Mm -hmm. even as they cycle out characters as actors, you know, complete their contracts and fill their arcs. I do think that putting the X-Men in it would be a little much. Yeah, especially because the X-Men itself, even in the comic books, is a universe among themselves. Yeah. Like, it's the X-Men is... It's like the comic book version of Game of Thrones. There's so mm. many different characters with so many different arcs and just like so much story to tell mm. that like it's too, it would be way too much. I'm almost, you know, as as hit or misses as hit or miss the X-Men films are, they're a wildly successful franchise on Fox's end and mm-hmm. they have turned out some quality products and soon to be probably Logan which so far 
looks very well. Yeah. And I mean, now that Deadpool was a massive hit out of nowhere, I think that, you know, that opens more possibilities. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but the Fantastic Four, I think, deserve to be let go by Fox. Absolutely. They, like, Fox has ruined it three times over. Yeah, it's... Embarrassingly. Enough's enough. There's no need to be a dead horse. Just give it to someone else. It's like giving a team... It's giving, it's like giving a bad team a new owner. Just put them under new management. It's the only yeah. thing you can do. Um, and here's a little bit of uh, fun news. Uh, actually, I have two pieces of fun news, but I'm going to go with the one that actually shocked me a little more first. So, remember that awesome Nintendo Switch reveal trailer and the podcast that we did with Bill Pivots? You should go listen to it if you haven't listened to it. But, Pat, do you remember recording it? Of course I remember. Awesome. I don't so, remember B- Bill being there, but, you know, no, I'm kidding. It's Bill's birthday. Happy birthday, Bill. Yeah, happy birthday, Bill. Actually, you know what's funny is Bill Pivots' birthday, November 27th, is the same birthday as Bruce Lee's. I guess that's pretty funny. That could be on Dad Ass Report. It could be. Well, now it is. Yeah, so that's a, that, that's I guess that's uh, report number two. So now there instead of three reports, there's four reports. So a um, little fun news about Nintendo Switch. Uh, Skyrim director, and this comes from IGN.com, the, the U.S. version. Skyrim director Todd Howard discusses Nintendo Switch. He said in, um, in an interview... Uh, speaking with Gick- Glixel, Howard mentioned that he actually got his hands on the Nintendo Switch. And his what he said was, I love it. I got to play it. One of the best demos I've ever seen. Probably the best demo I've ever seen at E3. Howard's praise did not stop there. It might be a big reason why Bethesda and Nintendo, uh, is a Nintendo Switch partner, along with plenty of other companies. I think it's a really smart what they're doing with Nintendo Switch, Howard said. So... That's a steaming pile of great news, which is something you know Nintendo's been needing for four years now. And granted, there's been good news in the past, but it's been like little trinkets here, like Amiibos being announced yeah. and a game getting really good reviews, and the uh, the Nintendo Switch reveal trailer, Pokemon Go. But like, actually, um, the one thing that Nintendo's always been struggling with is third party support, especially since the Nintendo 64 days. Mm-hmm. So hearing Bethesda, which is literally like now in my in my eyes on the same um heights as ea or activision or ubisoft they are huge they're huge and they keep putting out and even though i'm not i'm not gonna act like i'm the biggest bethesda fan here i know um oleski my dad you like their games a lot i I love wolfenstein Uh, i've yet to play doom but uh bethesda is a company that really you want on your side you know, mm-hmm. and this uh, Bethesda Nintendo partnership is an incredible announcement. Um, I don't think people are really giving this the the praise that it deserves. Granted, the article was released yesterday, or the interview was, um, and the interview may have been from a few days ago. I'm not too sure, but like this is something I'm just like, whoa, Bethesda, and pretty much this pretty much confirms that Skyrim is going to come on Nintendo Switch. Yeah, which is that'd huge. be interesting. Yeah, and it looks like the definitive version that they're selling for sixty dollars again. But that's some that's an excellent news, and the fact that you know it, it's in, in the video game industry, it's really easy to come off as facetious. Um, but like to go on and say I love it, I got to play it, one of the best demos I've ever seen, probably the best demo I've ever seen. We're definitely going to be supporting it. It's the first time we've done something on Nintendo. I think it's really smart what we're doing, and of course, it's like you know. It's the first time that they said they did something with Nintendo, uh, but that's in the, the end of the quote says, if you don't count the old NES stuff, which is, I guess, people that worked in the Bethesda that right. were developing games for the NES at the time. Um, I thought that was excellent news. Um, and like as much as I'm excited for Nintendo Switch, like I do have my reservations and I do have my, my doubts in some aspects and areas. But having a game director of Skyrim, which is going to go down in history as one of the best video games ever, ever made... Um, just saying that is, is I mean the whole the whole Elder Scrolls series is just amazing. Yeah, you don't like usually like you have like like president companies like the president of EA or like Peter Moore or uh you know like Ubisoft saying we're excited for the new generation of consoles like you're mm-hmm. going to be blown away. Like of, of course they're going to say that they want more consoles sold so they can sell more games. Right. But for like an actual game director and not to mention too like I want to point out a few years ago like some people at Naughty Dog were talking shit about Wii U. Say, mm-hmm. And, like, saying how, like, you know, Nintendo puts out this horrible console, but, you know, they are one of the best game developers I've ever seen. Like, we don't, like, it's yeah. it just the correlation, like, you don't understand how it works. 
So now for a director to be talking about a console, like specifically, like not talking about PS4 or Xbox One, but specifically a console that like has, you know, from a company that has been dying to be supported by third parties for so long. It was happy to read. It was a, it was a good read, especially as a Nintendo fan. I'd like to hear yeah. your thoughts about it. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I mean, it makes me more likely to buy a Nintendo Switch now, you know, because I love Bethesda games. And, you know, if I could get Skyrim on the go like that, that'd be me. Even though I haven't bought the new Definitive Edition, but now if he's just dropping hints like that, then I definitely won't anytime soon. Yeah. Nothing against the game. It's just if it's going to be on Switch, I might as well get it yeah. for Switch. Play, play. I mean, of course, that's speculation, but uh, I mean, Bethesda has. Not just their own development, but as publishers, they have a very large library. So yeah, whatever they put on would be great. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with uh, I'm happy with that quote, and I'm uh, that was a good article to read. Um, check it out the for the full article, even though I kind of just spoiled it everything for you. All right, and uh, the last one comes from bloodydisgusting.com, which is one of my favorite websites to ever visit ever, uh, especially because. One, there was an article the other day saying how Halloween three is highly underrated, and I completely agree with that. Um, but it comes from bloodydisgusting.com, an article about Eli Roth's Thanksgiving, hence since Thanksgiving has just passed. Right. Have you ever seen the Thanksgiving fake trailer from the Grindhouse movie that was released like eight or nine yes. years ago? Yes. Yes. It's a great, great fake trailer. Yeah. It's hysterical. So for years, fans have been begging Eli Roth to make an actual Thanksgiving movie. Now, a lot of people say, well, there's never been a Thanksgiving horror movie ever made. That's not true. There's been Thanksgiving horror movies. There's never been a good Thanksgiving horror movie. Thanks Killing. Thanks Killing with Gary Busey. No, I'm sorry. Gary Busey was in Ginger Dead Man. Uh, Thanks Killing. Uh, I don't know who's in that. It's just a bunch of no-name actors. And it's supposed to like be so bad it's good. But it, it's not even that. Yeah, it's, it's just so bad it's awful. Yeah, it's it. I don't know if it's a trauma film or not, and I'm a big fan of trauma. Uh, but it, it tries to go off like of that schlock, like it's so low brow that like you can't believe you're watching it. But like the thing with trauma movies is that there's at least like a sense of quality where like you know they get the aspect of the punchline and the comedy. Thanks Killing was just not that whatsoever. Thanks Killing was just the, so boring and like. <laughs> The movie it's, like it's not trauma. It's not yeah, it's not trauma. Yeah. No, it's uh in broad daylight films. Well they it seem like it seems like a trauma movie and like or they tried to do the trauma thing and it just failed horribly. I mean trauma doesn't even do trauma right sometimes. But uh I on the right on the box uh, art it says boobs in the first minute the first second of the movie. And yeah, there is boobs in the first second of the movie, but I'm pretty sure there's no other nudity throughout the rest like, of the movie. That's how you have to draw people in. Yeah, and it's just like because the internet isn't a thing where you can find boobs. Right, and you want. here's the thing: like that's bad advertising. Like when I look at something like the Toxic Avenger or like Black Christmas or Halloween or something with a theme or a draw that's uh, that uh, can almost have nothing to do with the plot, but yet is essential to the plot. You get that from the movie poster, like right in Halloween. You got a pumpkin, a knife, a scary face, the night he came home. You don't really know exactly what you're getting. It's the plots about a killer. It doesn't necessarily have to be about Michael Myers, but then you get the sense that, okay, this is about Michael Myers after you see the movie. Mm-hmm. So right away, just everything is wrong about Thanks Killing. Don't watch that movie. It had a budget of $3,500, and then it had a sequel called Thanks Killing 3, so he, they just skipped two. Uh, like Microsoft and Windows 9. Yep. And it raised $112,248 on Kickstarter to get made. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I, there's a, I guess there is a fan base for the movie. I never found it funny. But going back to Thanksgiving, the Eli Roth fake trailer uh, horror movie, uh, this is an actual quote from him. And it's, on, uh, it's from a Reddit AMA. And uh, now the article is on bloodydisgusting.com. Have a draft. Not totally happy with it. I want to put some more work into it so the film lives up to the trailer. We have the story and the mythology cracked, so now it's about getting the kills right. And uh, I respect that answer um, because as far as when it comes to slasher movies, it's really – plot is actually kind of just like a necessity more than like what you're trying to build up. It's just like a means to an end for a reason yeah. for people to die. So like – 
right away I was kind of like, okay, so he has, so he's got what he wants, but he wants to, he wants to know how people die. Like how, how are people going to die? How are people going to get killed? What are the murders going to be like? What are the scares going to be like? And that's a, that's important in a horror movie. So, uh, I think that's, uh, that concludes dad ass report. Think yeah, so? I don't think I have anything else. No? All right. So, Patrick, you had a good topic in mind. What do you, what's the main topic about today? I always have a good topic in mind. Uh, the main topic today is Justice League Dark. Ooh. Um, but we're mainly going to be talking about the animated movie, but there is also going to be a live action movie. Yes. Uh, directed by Doug Lyman, I believe, who did, um, uh, what, did, what the fuck did he do? Uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah. Which I know you didn't like, but a lot of people liked it. I, I personally know. did like it. Uh, but yeah, uh, Justice League Dark animated movie, part of the DCAU, is coming out. I think it's early January on digital. And then a few weeks later on um, DVD and Blu-ray. But yeah, they, they released the second trailer. Uh, the first trailer they released was more like... Some fully animated parts, some of the concept art, and then some interviews with the writers and directors. Uh, but then the second one was like fully processed. Mm-hmm. You know, they included scenes, especially they did include scenes from the previous trailer that was just drawn right. out instead of animated. But I'm really excited for this because the DCAU almost always has released some great movies especially they're on a really great run too like yeah the, their last several ones have been really solid and even the ones that are like duds aren't like horrible or like unbearable right. to watch right like they're just kind of like eh. but it's the justice league war was awesome great yeah that flashpoint um throne of atlantis uh all great yeah honestly and then like there's more like there, there's uh, a lot of the Batman ones are really good. The Batman, Batman, Superman, or Superman and Batman, Public Enemies was pretty sick. Yeah, um, uh, Superman Shazam was yeah. really good. Uh, oh, what was the one? Um, it's the famous storyline. I can't remember what they called the movie. I think they called the movie the same title of where uh, they use Batman's contingencies against the Justice League. Oh, Justice League Doom. Doom. Yeah, that was a really good one. I really liked that one a lot. That was an awesome one. Uh, and, like, they sometimes keep the um, the same style of animation throughout some of the DCAU movies. Yeah. Uh, and with Justice League Dark, it's the same animation as Justice League War. Yeah. Which I thought was really I, I cool. really like the designs that they use in there. And one. I'm pretty sure it's the same animation as Young Justice. Uh, I think it's a more updated, but very, very similar. Very similar. So it kind of makes me think, like, there's this... There, it, like, there's the... The movie universe, as far as when it comes to animated, is somewhat linked to a TV universe, which is of Young Justice, which is coming back. Thank fucking God. Yes. But yeah, so Justice League Dark, uh, we'll get into a little background about, before we get into the movie, like what it is. Justice League Dark is, it's a hero team, or, you know, maybe a, some anti-heroes on it, but it's a team that primarily deals in... The paranormal, magic, uh, you know, the whole supernatural. So ghosts, magic, demons, hell, all that stuff. Uh, and it's actually like they handle what the Justice League either can't or won't. For instance, like a or lot of don't know, yeah, or just don't don't understand. Like especially because Superman is, you know, as invulnerable as he is, he's weak to magic. Yeah. That's a, a lot of people don't know Superman's vulnerability to magic. It's not really like played upon. You're never going to see it in the DC extended universe, those shitty movies. Yeah, that's why Shazam is able to uh, kick his ass sometimes. Sometimes. Be- sometimes. Yeah. Because Shazam's powers come from magic. But, yeah, it deals a lot in the occult. And the team is like a really interesting team. There's some great stories in it. There's some really, really great characters. Uh, for most of their history, they've been led by John Constantine, who I think is just fucking one of my favorite characters, I think. He's a very tragic hero that's uh, usually almost always reluctant into doing some things. Uh, he's very guilty. He he's deals with a lot of demons, um, both literal and personal. I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah. Like, he literally deals with demons, and then he deals with his own personal demons, uh, and fun fact, uh, you love him portrayed by Keanu Reeves, don't you? Listen, I don't love it, but it 
if you did if it wasn't associated with a comic book character, it would have been fine. Whoa. <laughs> did you just come? Maybe. Um but I think Constantine is just like a fucking great character. He, no, I agree. He is just like a rude British douchebag, constantly smoking. Um, he actually is a really good uh, role model for kids. Yes, totally. No, uh, he's been praised for, from the L L B G T community because he is a bisexual character, and like some of his storylines deal with that, um, but in a, in a good way. Something that's not over preaching or anything, but mm-hmm. not making it you know shoving it down your throat or anything. But he's a magician. I almost slash... put you in a PC pretzel there. Wow, it's fucked up. The Evan, come on, don't SJW me. Uh, he's a magician, occult detective. Uh, he works with magic. He is able to spell cast. He knows a lot of incantations. He's an exorcist. He can summon demons, angels, and you know he could pretty much use the stuff around him in whatever situation it requires to figure out something, a spell to save someone, destroy something, this, that, or the other. Uh, and, but he's primarily the leader. I think lately Zatanna has taken over as a leader. Um, mm-hmm. Zatanna Zatara, she is a magician. Uh, she is actually the daughter of a magician as well. John Zatara um, who were both, they were both in Young Justice, by the way. Yes, they were. Um, but yeah, she is a, another magician. Uh, she was actually in Batman the Animated Series as well. Yeah, she was. Yeah, they had a whole episode based around her. Yeah, what, when she what made a great it. series. We have to do an episode on that series. We do. Um, let's see who else. And then there's Dead Man, who's fucking killer he's great uh, he's, he's not like my favorite comic book character but i just like him yeah uh hold on. there's looking, swamp I'm, thing there's swamp thing who is great especially his new 52 run um madam xanadu madam xanadu who is a like fortune teller we got edrogen the demon uh etrigan etrigan excuse me god damn god damn sorry dude like chill, man. Oh, the, do you remember the Justice League uh, episode dedicate, dedicated to Etrigan, the demon? Mm-hmm. That was, pro- I think, that's one of my favorite episodes because it was it really good. Deals with it, it, one of the few episodes we actually get to like find out more about Martian Manhunter. Yeah, I agree. Uh, there's somebody else like big that I can't... Raven. Oh yeah, Raven. But even though she's primarily Teen Titans, but her, the reason she was involved in it is because she is a dark force magic user. And her father is one of like the most powerful demons, yeah. In the DC verse, uh, they've even had some vampires on their team, some zombie. At one point, Frank the Frankenstein monster. Yeah, the Frankenstein monster we was on it. Yeah. Time, yeah. Uh, and there's also this one character called Black Orchid, Orchid, who Rachel McAdams uh, apparently for years really wanted to play. Really? Yeah, apparently, and it almost when Justice League Dark was pitched and it was like the live action and it was going to seem like it was going to happen, she was going to choose that over Doctor Strange, but Justice League Dark kept getting pushed back because reasons. Um, And there's also the Constantine TV series, which didn't get a chance by NBC. NBC completely fucked it from the start. But the actor who played Constantine, Matt Ryan, was literally the most perfect choice for I've that. I've never heard you say that before. I will say it as many times as I want, all right? Like, it was absolutely perfect. Like, this guy literally brought him to life. Like, like RDJ as Tony Stark level quality. Like, it, honestly, the whole show, you know, was hit and miss, but he was always on end, which is great. Because it did, after Constantine was canceled, he did have an appearance on Arrow. I wish he had more than just one episode. And that he was on, you know, maybe on Legends Tomorrow, which was a rumor. But Matt Ryan is going to be the voice actor in Justice League Dark as Constantine, which I think is great. You know, a nice little thing for Constantine live action fans. Yeah. Um, Just to dive into a little history of Justice League Dark, it's actually kind of a newer team. Uh, 
you hear about the Avengers and the Justice League, and uh, even though the Guardians of the Galaxy we see on tele, um, I'm sorry, we see in the movies is a newer team. There was a Guardians of the Galaxy before them that was yeah. comprised of different characters. Uh, Justice League Dark is actually a, a f- wow, yeah. Uh, uh, September 2016 was five years ago. It started mm-hmm. its publication. It was a, uh, it was one of the first um, new storylines that could roll out with the New 52, which was DC Universe's uh, re- uh, reboot before DC Rebirth. And by far, and I'm and just a small little comment. DC re- Rebirth, I think, so far is better than the New 52. But opinion, let me know in the comments below what you think. Uh, first appearance uh, of the team was September 2011. Uh, as Justice, the Justice League Dark, um, number yeah, one. Yeah, they had they had all existed prior to prior that. to this, yes, and have crossed over with each other and stuff before. But it just made sense to make a team. The team. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it was created by Peter Milligan, uh, who is known for works in comic books, film, and television and stuff like that. Uh, yep. So that's just a brief little history. Um, Pat, what what do you want to talk about first, as far as when it comes to the trailers, what we think is going to be in the movie, or well, I mean, in the trailer, it's it starts off with well, the the second trailer actually um, starts off with this guy. You know, I think he was eating like a bowl of cereal or something, and this black shadow demon just shoves his hand into his head and just like a, does something to him that like this just sounds destroys the guy. like a Brazers video. Brazers. Brazers. Uh, ooh. It does. It you, does. The it way you described is. it, I didn't know if you're talking about a movie or <laughs> no. But uh, throughout the trailer, we kind of see this um, this occult user. I don't know if he is summoning. Uh, he's a magic user, and it seems like he's trying to summon a demon to bring onto Earth because he wants. He said he wants to uh, rewrite and restore the Earth as he sees fit. And whatever he's causing on Earth is causing a lot of demons and monsters to be released, mm-hmm. and it's causing innocent people to, like, good civilians to do terrible things. And the Justice League is at a loss. And Batman's like, well, if it's magic, you say, all right, we have to get John Constantine then, because he's an expert and he's very powerful in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Batman, it, it seems like Batman is going to be one of the major members of the Justice League. Like, out of the regular Justice League, he'll probably have the most screen time with Justice League Dark members. Right. Well, even in the trailer, like, when they show, like, the DVD poster cover or whatever, Batman's right in the forefront of it. Yeah, even he is actually Constantine. the only uh, Justice League member on the cover. Yeah. The wrestler, the Justice League Dark members. Yeah, which, I, I, as much as I love Batman, he, he's my favorite comic book character of all time. Constantine should be in the he front. He should be. Yeah. Because he's the leader of the team, but I get why they did it. Marketing, exactly. It yeah, it just makes sense. I probably if I were in that position, I would have probably done the same thing just to sell, just because you know you need to make money. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, Justice League Dark actually does have like a really big cult following, uh, and it's only getting bigger. Yeah. Um, at one, Del Toro is a big fan. Yeah, of Yeah, he was yeah. going to direct the live action movie. He had been trying, and then DC like you know was had their heads up their asses, and then George Miller was going to do it. He was attached yeah. to it for a little bit, and then uh, finally they got Doug Lyman, who left Gambit to do it. Because uh, Gambit, apparently, is you know, a shit show. But I... I um, It'll get made soon. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's supposed to be, I think, sometime by 2022. Yeah. I think. If it, if it keeps that, who knows. Um, but I want to see how much the other Justice League members are going to... Be. Oh, before, speaking of other Justice League members, in the recent run of DC animated movies, we have seen Hal Jordan, Green Lantern, in the movies. But in this one, our boy... John Stewart is in it. I'm which I, so I was surprised pumped. at. But pleasantly, of course. Yeah. And not that I don't... like In, like, in any type of Justice League origin story, it should be Hal Jordan. Um, yeah. Like, like in Justice League War. But, uh, you know, like in just any old movie where it's just Justice League is randomly there, like, yeah, I want to see Jon Stewart because he's awesome. Right. Um, yeah, I want to see... I, I think it's going to be really interesting. You know, we don't really know much about the plot. It's just the supernatural things are happening. Batman enlists the help of John Constantine and Justice League Dark. 
But what I'm really interested in seeing is how the members of the Justice League, aside from Batman, who it seems like nothing surprises them or anything, deal with this supernatural uh, occurrences. You know, because most of the members of the Justice League, all the ones with powers, you know, that's strange enough. Like, that would be surprising enough, especially, you know, having an alien and uh, the daughter of a god, you know, um, is kind of crazy enough. It would be crazy enough to process, but magic is a whole different, yeah. you know, beast. It, it's, well, the way that a lot of... Uh a lot of stories uh, handle magic as they treat it like a science. So yeah. it's it's not just something that's, you know, like, like even look at the Harry Potter series or uh, Doctor Strange or uh, Dark, Justice League Dark. Like they treat magic as if, as it's something that has to be studied and practiced, which studying and practicing obviously applies to science. So yeah. that's why I'm like, it's it makes sense for the Justice League who have, you know, who are up to date technologically, uh, up to date uh, when it comes to like earthly threats and extraterrestrial threats, because uh, they apply science or force to whatever they need to succeed. Then when there's magic, it's just something that they completely don't understand and they need someone who studies and practices magic. And that's what I really like. To, that's what I really like about Justice League Dark, and that's what I I think that's what I like about Constantine, like being appearing and or mm -hmm. I mean not just appearing, being the star of this movie. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be really interesting to see, and, I, and it's like, and it depends on how much the regular members are involved. But speaking of the the cast, let's talk about Matt Ryan, obviously as Constantine. We got Jason O'Mara back as Batman. Uh, he's been doing that for the last several, I think, since Justice League War, maybe a little bit before that. Uh, Camilla Luddington as Zatanna, Nicholas Totero as Boston Brand, aka Dead Man. Got Ray Chase as Jason Blood, aka Edrigan the Demon, Jerry O'Connell as Superman, uh, Rosario Dawson as Wonder Woman, Jeremy Davies as Richie Sam Simpson, Enrico Colatoni as Felix Faust, Alfred Molina as Destiny, and Roger Cross as both Swamp Thing and John Stewart. And Black Orchid is a confirmed to appear, but has yet to be cast. Apparently, as of this Wikipedia. Update. If we see Felix Faust, do you think we'll see Hades? I don't know. Probably not. Maybe if there's a sequel. Could be. If there's, you know, if there's a sequel, that's definitely an option. I hope there'd be, well, I hope this is going to be really good. And then if there is, then yeah, that'd be really interesting to see. Uh, and I'm also surprised I didn't see Dr. Fate's name on this. But I, I'm not, I guess I'm not too surprised, but, you know, Dr. Fate is... You can uh, only have so many supernatural, yeah, hugely yeah. powerful magic user, uh, ancient user. I think it's really funny that Jerry O'Connell is Superman, given how you know ridiculous he is. I don't know. It's just funny. I would never picture that guy as Superman, but it is. You know, it's funny. It's it's a pretty solid uh, voice cast. I mean, you know, they're getting some really big names for these. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting because a couple of them have worked for Marvel too. Like Jason Amara is currently on Agents of Shield, Rosario Dawson in the Netflix series, uh Alfred Molina was uh, Doc Ock in Spider Man Two. Yeah. So you know it's interesting. But there's actually a lot. Like between the animated universes, obviously it's very easy to be doing you know, whether you're doing D C and live action, you could do Marvel animated, whatever, without it being a conflict of interest or anything really. Mm -hmm. But I uh, this movie comes out January 24th of 2017. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it, and I hope it spawns its own new uh, universe and definitely some sequels. Yeah, I would like to see, like, since the DCEU has a lot to work up towards, to, if you want to even compare it to the MCU, not just by the amount of movies, but just by quality, too. Like, I would love to see, like, the DC animated universe, like, be like, hey, no, we are gonna compete with the MCU because Marvel's animated stuff is kind of, eh, you know, the, movie wise. Apparently, the Guardians of the Galaxy show is very good. Um, the new Spider Man, the current Spider Man TV series is doing pretty well. I haven't watched it. See, I, uh, it, that's the but, um, Ultimate Spider Man, right? Oh, is it the Ultimate I think Spider -Man? it's Ultimate Spider Man with Drake Bell as the voice. 
Yeah, is it? I think it is. Yeah, Ultimate, see, but whatever it is. If you I, watch I Spectac- watched Spectacular it. Spider-Man, which came up before that, that series is awesome. Yeah, two seasons. It's like there's like I, I think there's like under like thirty episodes or something stupid like that. Like, but it's awesome, awesome series. But yeah, I would like to. St- that'd be nice touch because the DC animated movies are fucking killer. Yeah, they're they're critical, you know, critical hits. Uh, Batman Under the Red Hood. Yeah, oh, great movie. Yeah, great, great movie. And that um, has like that has a good score on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not only is it uh, doing well critically, but more importantly, they've all done very well fan wise, which clearly yeah. is the most important thing. Uh, at least the animated, you know, and the I'm people behind the, the animated DC. universe yeah. are giving a shit about what they're doing. <laughs> I'm happy for the with for the, the exception of the first half of the Killing Joke. Oh yeah. yeah. But well, I still like the Killing Joke a lot, despite I its do. Problems. But the back half is what makes it. Yeah, exactly. I actually I, the next time I watched it, I just totally skipped the whole Batgirl mm-hmm. sex scene. But uh, no, you didn't. You fucking touched yourself too. Probably, it. yeah. I I don't remember, but um, yeah. The, like I'm happy for like the DC loyalists that are just like screaming for quality uh, content, not just in their comics, but in like their other mediums too, which is TV and movies. Yeah. Because uh, I know, like, you've been very vocal about Arrow shit in the bed. Uh, Although, speaking of Arrow, I, I got to give him credit for this season. It's not fantastic, but compared to the joke that last season was, it, it's, like, actually not bad. Really? Com- but that's right. comparatively to, it's relative to last People season. People are starting to like Supergirl more. People are Supergirl kinda, is definitely yeah. better than last season. There are some really stupid moments, but that's Whatever. natural. But it's definitely yeah. less preachy and everything it's it's stronger i think it's found its right. its footing uh we should uh yeah but um j- but then you know then there's the dceu which sucks but i'm just i'm happy that the, the dc loyalists that are just hey we are dc fanboys there's nothing wrong with that um like saying like we have the animated movies like that's yeah, at that, least you, you have that. but like it, i i don't want to say it like oh well at least because that's something good to have it is and you know what it's if they keep churning out like quality things like that, that's fine. Yeah. Even though I want like the DCEU live action movies to be, you know, awesome, awesome, you know, as yeah. awesome as possible. I want Wonder Woman to be at sick. least we have this. Plus in the animated movies, like they're doing stories that they wouldn't that either wouldn't work live action or they just wouldn't touch live action. It it's because animation is just simpler. Well, you could literally do anything with animation. Yeah. But I still like even because they're direct to video, like they're able to do whatever stories that right. fits well. And now direct to video, although some isn't... some of it's not, yeah, it's not as like direct... doesn't carry the same like if, stigma. Yeah, if you as were to, it used to, yeah, if you were to go to Blockbuster in 1995 and be like, I like in the there's like the direct to DVD or wow, direct to DVD, direct to video um, movies, you knew they were bad. It was the Steven Seagal, Van Damme, like. Mm-hmm movies then eventually the cuba good and jr movies that like like these movies just suck but like now with the with the um amazing introduction of netflix it, like in the 2000s and yeah. then also too on demand being a big thing on demand itunes amazon yeah you know um straight straight to video is i almost prefer it sometimes yeah it because you know it if they have the budget, even if they don't have the budget, it's it allows for more freedom, and they could release it as they want. Uh, it's so it accessible sense. at yeah. any point, and it really does like a lot of really good stuff now is being like released right to digital, yeah. right to and it's and it doesn't carry the same stigma, and it's definitely changed a lot since then. You also don't like it's they can get their money back too better uh, with video sales because. These movies have a couple million dollar budgets. Like they're not cheap uh, by animation standards. Uh, obviously, you know you have the hundred million dollar DreamWorks and Pixar movies, but you know that's a different story. Yeah. Um, you don't have to advertise that much. Like you could just put a video on YouTube, and then it's like, hey, yeah, you just release the trailers, yeah. release a poster, and there you go. Hey, that's it. And it's like it's going to be it's going to be available to you. Buy it at Best Buy yeah, or Target or Walmart. You're not spending hundreds of millions of dollars to produce this movie. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and you know, animation can be cheaper, and which is good. But I think that um, the direct to video has worked so far for the DC animated universe. I do think, uh, like I said, there's some stories that they can do in animation that they wouldn't do live action. There's also some 
the opposite of that, like the under the red hood, that's a huge story that they could do live action. That would be, uh, well received by people. You know, people would be yeah. definitely down for that. I know, um, back when Ban uh, Batfleck was announced to have his own movie, uh, a lot of people were speculating it was going to be that storyline. Um, of course, as of right now, it's not. It could be, though. It could be because Deathstroke was involved. Well, well I mean, it could be, but we know no, Deathstroke is going to be the big bad. I, I'm, I don't mean it could be as in the movie that's coming out now, but I mean it could be a storyline in the future. In the future, movies. yeah. 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 Um, yeah, but I think, you know, the DC animated universe, as long as it keeps being good, I'm okay. Yeah. You know, I, I can... I can't get over the DCEU sucking balls, but you know, at least I have, I still have this. I have the DC TV shows, uh, other than Gotham, you know, which, okay. Granted, we're not really big fans of that show. But people but, love it. But people love it. And like, I won't deny, I'm not going to say the show is bad, but like, it's just not, uh, it's just not for us. There are things about it that are bad, but I, right. I, I, I don't like it. There's things that I don't yeah. like. Yeah. Right. Um, do you have anything else you want to share about? Justice League Dark or um, well, depending on when the live action movie. First of all, I hope that the live action movie still happens. Yeah, because you know it could be depending on how the next few DCEU movies do. They would be like, all right, that's too much of a risk. Let's not do that. Um, or like they'll just decide they'll keep delaying it and delaying it and delaying it, and then they'll lose Doug Liman, and then they'll get another director and lose that. I mean, look at the Flash movie. They are already just lost their second director in like eight months. Yeah, over creative differences. Over creative differences, which sucks. But I hope it happens. Um, I know as soon as it was announced that it's definitely going to happen, people like myself were instantly being like, get Matt Ryan to play it. get Just get him for Constantine. Just do it because it'd be great. But clearly that's you know very unlikely that that'll ever happen. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see who would they, what characters they would choose, and who would they get to play them. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. it's, you just won't know. Yeah, but never say never. Never say never. Never stop. Never stopping. I think that uh, should conclude our episode. Yes, we're going to go see Arrival. Yeah, and uh, the movie starts at ten thirty, and it's ten twenty. So I think we should do our plugins. Yeah, well, it's actually 10.17. But anyway, uh, guys, let us know what you think of the Justice League Dark trailer. Um, if you're excited for the animated movie, what you are hoping from the animated movie, what you are hoping for the live-action movie, who would you cast in the live-action movie if you had your fan choices? Uh, and, you know, Thanks for listening. Uh, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe, download, and rate us on iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, Stitcher. Uh, let's see what else. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash awesome Sunday show. Follow us on Twitter at awesome sun show, on Instagram, awesome Sunday show. Snapchat, which we haven't used in a while, awesome Sunday. Uh, my Twitter is at Rick Pat Mick. I'm at Lesson Connor. And thanks for listening, guys. Have a good one. Peace. Thank you.